So let's look at arithmetic combinations of functions. And our goal here is to perform operations with functions that have a graph and don't have a graph. So a function, you can think of a function as really just a generator of values or numbers. If we put a value in for the domain of a function, we're always going to get a resulting range value. So here's a simple function, f of x equals x squared plus five. We could come along and we could put in a value in the domain of x equals five. Now what does that do? Well, that takes this function generator and we want to put in a five. So really all it does is change all of the x's to fives. And then we can just do the calculation. Five squared is 25 plus five and we get 30, a value for the range. Maybe we choose a different x value, we'll get a different y value or different range value. So these are just number generators. Now with functions though, we can perform operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And that's what we're gonna look at today. So here's two functions, f of x and g of x. And we want to first perform this operation, the sum of these two functions. And the sum of the functions, the notation is going to look like this. f plus g of x is equal to f of x plus g of x. Well, what does that mean? All we're going to do when we want to do f plus g of x is we're going to take the function f, and instead of writing f of x, we're going to write what the actual value is. And the same goes for g of x. Instead of writing g of x, we want to write the actual value. So what does this become? And I'm going to use brackets at first for these functions. f of x is really 2x minus 1 plus g of x is x squared minus 4. Now all we have to do is combine our like terms and we'll get x squared plus 2x minus five. And there is our function f plus g of x. There's our first operation, the sum of a function. Same can be said if we do the difference, just the same idea. Now we're taking the function f of x, 2x minus one, and this time instead of adding, we're going to subtract it, x squared minus four. Be careful here with your positives and negatives. The first bracket is 2x minus 1. Remember, we must distribute that negative term in to the second bracket. We'll get negative x squared plus 4. And then at this point, we can combine our like terms and get negative x squared plus 2x plus 3. There is our function f minus g of x. Well, if we can do subtraction, we can do addition, we can also do product, the multiplication. Multiplication, we just have to be careful. Our notation there, f g of x is really f of x, which in this case is same function, multiplied by g of x, as it states up above there. And now we just have to expand this out, multiply it out. We'll get 2x cubed minus 8x minus x squared plus 4. And when we write our terms in descending order, we'll get 2x cubed minus x squared minus 8x plus 4. And we have one last operation, quotient, performing the division. Well, when we see our notation that looks like this, f over g of x, we're really saying f of x over g of x, which really just means we have 2x minus 1 over x squared minus 4. There is f over g of x. Now what we're going to get in the habit of doing when we have rational functions is always factor where possible. If we notice the denominator here, it's a difference of squares. We can factor that difference of squares and there's our solution. 
Now, the reason we want to factor that denominator is an important piece for quotient. For a quotient, if we ever have a fraction, we must state any restrictions that exist on that function. So we must state the restrictions. And in this factored form, it's pretty easy to see the restrictions. X cannot equal plus and minus 2. Values that would make that denominator equal to 0. Now, one thing to note about all of these operations is the domain. And the domain must be stated. And here's the important piece about the domain. The domain of the new function must include restrictions of the new function, if they exist, like in our quotient, plus any original restrictions on the domains. And we're going to look at a couple examples to see what that means. But we must consider restrictions throughout these functions. So let's look at this first example. Here's three functions. What we're going to do is solve these functions. So when we have a notation of gj, like so, what we're really saying is we're saying g of negative 3 multiplied by j of negative 3. There is our operation. So to perform this operation, we can just go to our function named g, and our g function of x is right here, we would just replace this x value with the domain value we want to put in, the negative 3. So g of negative 3 is really just 2 over negative 3 plus 2. Now remember, this is a product, so I'm going to put it in brackets so we know it's a product. j of negative 3 is just negative 3 squared now, what we do have to be careful about is notation. When we are squaring our negative 3, really, we should have brackets like so, so we know that we're squaring the whole value. Well, let's solve each of these brackets individually. The first one becomes 2 over negative 1, and we're going to multiply that by negative 3 squared is positive 9, which is pretty clear. We have negative 8. Let's try another, this time with negative 4. And when we put negative 4 in for f and negative 4 in for g, we can find this value. Really, we want to think of this as f of negative 4 over g of negative 4 and do each of those calculations first individually. So the first one becomes... 1 over negative 4 squared, there's f of negative 4, all over, g in this case is 2 over negative 4 plus 2. Now we do have a fraction over a fraction, but that's fine. So let's just continue on here. Our numerator will become 1 over negative 4 squared is 16. The denominator is 2 over negative 2 which we can now see is 1 over 16 over negative 1, which really just becomes negative 1 16th. There is our value of f of negative 4 over g of negative 4. Well, what if we don't have numbers but have variables, like in this situation? Now we want to determine the new combined function and the new domain if it exists. So let's look at this first one, g minus f of x. Now, it's a good habit to just rewrite this as g of x minus f of x. We're just subtracting f of x from g of x. So let's put our values in here. 2 over x plus 2 is g of x. Minus, our f of x in this case, is 1 over x squared. Now, we can't stop there. We do have to add these two fractions together. So our lowest common denominator here is going to include both denominators. To combine these fractions together, that means we're going to have to multiply the first fraction, top and bottom, by x squared. 
The second fraction, we're going to have to multiply, and I'm going to put the 1 in there so it's clear, top and bottom by x plus 2, because this now is going to create a common denominator. And once we have a common denominator, then we can combine the numerators. So at this point, we know the denominator is common. So I'm just going to write that common denominator in, like so. Our numerator, then, we just expand as we need to. 2x squared minus, remember this negative is going to distribute in, minus x minus 2 and we can just leave it like so. There is our new function. Now what we do have to consider though is the new domain. And the domain must consider the functions that we started with and their restrictions. So if we look at f of x and g of x, the restriction on f of x is x cannot equal 0. The restriction on g of x is x cannot equal negative 2. So we must include those restrictions as well as any other new restrictions on our new function. The good part about this function is that if we are writing the domain, it's only those original two values x can't equal 0 and negative 2. There's no new values that are included in this new domain. Still just 0 and negative 2. But other than those, x can be any other real number. So combining functions and then looking at the domain. And we're going to spend some time looking at that throughout this class. But let's try another example a little bit tougher here, g, k over i of x. We have multiple operations now. So we're really doing g of x, k of x, all over i of x. Now, as they get more complex, it's always good to make a note of what the restrictions are in the original functions. So let's look at our restrictions g of x, we say x cannot equal negative 2. k of x tells us x must be greater than or equal to 0. And i of x has no restriction at all. x can be any values. So we're going to keep that in mind as our restrictions as we create our new function. So let's put our functions in. 2 over x plus 2 is g of x. k of x is root x. i of x is x squared minus 9. If we do some algebra here, simplify it down, we're going to get 2 root x over x plus 2 in the numerator all over x plus squared minus 9, which can really become 2 root x all over x plus 2 times x squared minus 9. And keep in mind, we want to factor that denominator. So we'll go one step further. And by factoring that denominator, we will see a difference of squares and other restrictions. So now we have to consider restrictions that we started with as well as new restrictions that have been created in this function. So if we were to combine our old restrictions with our new restrictions, our new domain is x such that Keep in mind here that negative 2 is less than 0. So we don't even need to consider that restriction. All we need to consider 
is the restrictions that are created down here. And the restrictions that are created are plus 3 and minus 3. Notice another negative that's not going to be considered because it's not greater than 0. So when we combine our domain together, we get this domain. x must be greater than or equal to 0. x cannot equal 3. And x is an element of all the real numbers. Every other x value is allowed. How do we do this if we have a graph? So here's two graphs, f of x and g of x. We don't have a function. But what we do want to do is we want to perform an operation with these graphs. We want to subtract g of x from f of x. Now I'm going to use this lighter version of the graph so we can see how we do such a thing. Remember, f minus g of x is really just f of x minus g of x. When we have a graph, we're going to choose one x value and determine the y value associated with that. What does that mean? Well, let's look at this x value right here. And we're going to start with that point on the graph. That is really f of negative 10 and g of negative 10. So f of negative 10, the value when x is negative 10, gives us a y coordinate of 3. The g value at that point, we're going to look down here then, the g value at that point is negative 6. So when we combine those together and do that operation, we get 3 plus 6, which really means when we combine these functions and perform this operation, when we put in an x value of negative 10, remember we put x equals negative 10 in there, we're going to get a y value of 9. So our new graph is going to be up here at 9. So we can do the same with other coordinates. Let's choose now this coordinate right here. And we'll do this calculation one more time. This time, we're going to put f of negative 4 minus g of negative 4 and determine what the new y value is. Well, f of negative 4 is all the way up here at 6. And from there, we're going to minus g of negative 4. Well, this one's easy, is 0. So we just get 2. 6. So our new coordinate on our graph is at 6. Now as we get better at this, we can start to do this in our head. f of this value 0 is 2 minus, down here at that same value is minus 4. We're really looking now, in this case, at 2 minus negative 4, which again puts us at 6. Let's keep working our way across. Let's use this x coordinate, 3. Well, now we're going to do 4 minus 2, and that's pretty easy to do. We just get 2. And let's do one last one. Let's go out here to 10, and at 10, we are going to have 4 minus negative 4. And remember, 4 minus negative 4 is going to put us up here at 8. And there's the points. Once we have those points, we can just connect the dots with straight lines and there is our new graph. Just performing the operation without an equation, just using the graph. And we're going to look at these and more details in class.